Hi there, this is the Zen Witch with another in the Art of Ritual series. And what I'm going to talk to you about this evening, or whatever time of day it is you're watching this, is actually about casting a circle and how you go about casting a circle. Of course, there isn't just one way. As with all of the stuff that I tell you about, there isn't just one way. You find your own way. So I will give you a range to consider here. So um, the formal way of casting a circle, which I was initiated into Gardnerian Wicca when I was 30. I think I was 30. Um, and they, they have a beautiful way of casting. It's kind of like a threefold thing. And this is what I adopted and what I did for many, many years and still do when I really need um, the steps to take me from one frame of mind to another. So remember that the whole point of ritual is to move you from one consciousness into another consciousness. Remember the definition of magic, the art of changing consciousness at will. Well, just doing the ritual and casting the circle should take you from one place to another. It's to move you from mundane head where you're, you know, concerned about how you look and what things cost and what bills need to be paid and who pissed you off that day into this expansive headspace, right brain headspace of union with everything and to drop that barrier between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind so that the two come to the fore and you're in that place where magic can be created. So the tools for formal casting is you need a blade. I'll be right back. You can also cast with a wand. Um, my preferred tool is a blade because that's what I learned, but you can certainly cast with a wand. My other preferred tool is a sword. I have a katana that I use when I really need some serious protection. So here is this beautiful, beautiful, classic witchy athame. Yeah, if I hold it back, you can see the whole thing, duh. Um, that came from a wonderful place called the Eye of the Cat in um, Orange County, California, or in Los Angeles. I think they were actually in Los Angeles. And just in the last couple of months, they had a devastating fire at their business. Um, they had two cats that lived in the shop that both passed away. And they took a lot of smoke damage. And I haven't looked to see um, how they've been recovering because they went straight from that in, into the pandemic. So, you know, holy shit, I don't know how they're doing. But this was purchased for me um, by my ex-husband at Eye of the Cat in 1990. So I've had it for 30 years, and that blows my fucking mind. But, oh, it feels good in my hand, and it is razor-ass sharp. I think if you see my um, video on Air and Fire... I might have talked about this. I might not. I'll have to go back and rewatch that and see. I like my thames and my blades sharp for ritual. There's a thing that says, you know, you should have them dulled so you don't hurt somebody. This is a symbol of my will. I don't want it to be dull. I want my will to be focused. I want, when I use this, I need to be paying attention of where I point my will or it can hurt somebody. So yes, keep your thames sharp. And pay the fuck attention to what you're doing with it. So this is what I generally use to cast the circle. Now, if I don't have an athame, this is what I use. I use my hand. You can use your finger too. So you can start in the east or you can start in the north. I generally start in the north. The way I was trained, you start in the east. No right or wrong. Again, why do I start in the north? Because I am starting from what is. The north is earth. It's manifestation. It is manifest reality. What actually is. What, what is manifesting in this moment. And um, this is weird. So, ne never mind. I'm not even going to go there. It's wiggling and I don't know why. Anyway, um, so that's why I start in the earth. 
in the, the north with the earth. You can start in the east, which is the opener, you know, starts with the mind. Everything starts with the mind. That is perfectly legit and perfectly valid. At any rate, the first thing that you're going to do is carve out this space. You're going to physically kind of cut. And I walk around. So the first thing that I do is I stand, I hold my athami like this. I feel my feet on the ground. I put my roots down through my feet. I draw the energy up into my body. I shoot it out my head and around me in an egg. That in itself is casting a circle. That right there you've cast a circle around you or a sphere because what you're casting is a sphere really, not a flat circle. So I get myself connected and, and, you know, connected to the source of energy because I'm not pulling it from my body. And then I feel that energy going down into my hand and then down into my blade and out the tip. And I usually have this hand kind of up like this as I'm pointing the blade. I will show you. Sort of like this. Okay. And I am walking. And as I'm walking... I am saying something to this effect. I set this space aside to be a place outside of the mundane realm. I carve out this space to be a place that is no place and a time that is no time. I remove this space from the realm of the mundane, from the realm of the ordinary. So I am talking about what I'm doing. I'm cutting away a space. I'm defining something. And the space, a place that is no place and a time that is no time are particularly resonant with me because that's where you're going. You're going into that timeless, placeless place. You know, rituals, um, if you've noticed, if you've ever been in like really deep ritual time goes all funny sometimes you can think you've been there hours and it's just an hour sometimes you can think you know it hasn't been that long and three hours have gone by so it truly is a place left time happens in the left brain when you shift over into right brain you get this timeless thing this also happens when you're working on art when you're working on anything that that takes you into right brain um, if you do any kind of artwork like that, or even just painting, painting a wall, painting something that shifts you into that right brain focus, you notice all of a sudden time just has no meaning whatsoever, or it goes very quickly. Um, like, you know, the time flies when you're having fun. Well, time either flies or slows down when you're in ritual, but it becomes irrelevant is the point. So with the athame, I am carving out the space. I am defining the space. And you can do, you know, like the actual physical boundary, you're pointing where the actual physical boundary is going to be, or you can do more general. And I tend to point not at the ground, but just out so that everything that I can see is included in that circle. All the space, all the visible space around me is included in that circle. And you are the witch. You're casting the circle. You decide the way it's going to be. So mode it fucking be. All right? You say the way it is. My will be done. This is the circle that I'm casting. Now, with Gardnerian Wicca and many other varieties of Wicca too, there's all this um, door cutting stuff where you go into circle and that boundary is an actual hard physical boundary. And if anybody needs to like leave to go to the bathroom or, you know, get something that was forgotten, you cut a doorway and the way that goes. And I don't really remember exactly which way I'm going to guess here. And I think I'm probably right. But let's say you've got, you know, the circle cast here. Let's imagine it's floating in the middle of the air and somebody needs to leave. Well, to cut a doorway, you you kind of start from one place in the circle imagine it's cut and you go up and over and i'm going right to left thinking about the banishing way to kind of cut a circle to cut it to open it and then you hold the blade there at the point that you ended so you're going up 
over and down and you're holding the blade there. The person leaves, you go up and over and down again to seal it. When they come back, same thing, you cut it open and then they come back in and you close it. Okay. I don't cut doorways anymore. I do if I feel like it, you know, if the spirit moves me and I feel like having fun with that. But when I cast a circle, it's movable and expandable. And if I'm in the middle of ritual and I have to go to the bathroom, I make the, the affirmation in my mind that this space goes with me. The circle goes with me. I go into the bathroom, it follows me, it comes back. So um, I think if you're doing ritual with, with more people, um, sometimes cutting doorways helps then because it keeps the energy contained. So maybe, you know, maybe with a coven, it would be more of a benefit to, to cut doorways, especially if somebody's like leaving the room and going to a different part of the house where that mundane head is going to come rushing back in. Um, it can keep the, the, the energy that's in the circle particularly contained to that area. So if you're not going to do it that way, just make sure you tell people in circle, when you leave this circle, carry the energy with you. Don't break the energy by getting in a normal conversation or, you know, don't go back into mundane head, take it with you, bring it back with you. So you can do that either way. So first part, cutting the actual circle casting the actual circle. And when you're doing it, what I'm visualizing, particularly if I'm pointing at the ground, visualize like this purple blue light coming out of this and like lightning, like ultraviolet lightning coming out and onto the ground and defining the boundary. So you can visualize that. The second part then is to go around with um, sage. Well, I mean, you can do you can do this a couple ways. Usually I, I smoke cleanse the space first with sage. Then in the casting, you're, you're making it sacred. So you've cut this circle and then I go around with frankincense and myrrh because this is an offering. So you could use sage in this part and use frankincense and myrrh on the altar, or you could use this in the casting. Frankincense and myrrh is going around with air and fire so that the space is purified, which is the air, and charged, which is fire. And then that's the second part. Then the third part is going around with salt and water. Now, when you have a charcoal lit and you put the uh, frankincense and myrrh on, when I put the frankincense on, I'm offering to the solar energies. When I put the myrrh on, I'm offering to the lunar energies and balanced. So those are sacred already. You are sensing the circle with that, C-E-N-S-I-N-G. And then you are going around with the salt and water. So you have a bowl of water, you have salt. The first thing you want to do is bless the water and I usually say blessings upon you, creature of water. Blessed be thou, creature of water. May all hindrance and malignity be cast forth from you and only goodness and purity remain to my service. So mote it be. So those are some nice words from, from Gardnerian. Um, I love the hindrance and malignity be cast forth. So hindrance is anything that's going to limit you and malignity is anything that can get attached to you. So you're, you're casting those out of the water, making it pure. And I use water from my purifier. I have a hell of a purifier. And so I use water from that, but energetically you're casting out anything that you don't want there. And then salt, blessed be thou creature of salt already pure from the womb of the mother. And then I join it with the water, usually three. Um, some people do this with an athami, um, but three things. And then I usually put in a fourth for the unnamed and the unnameable. And then you go around the circle with the salt and water. And um, then the, the circle is then blessed and made whole. And I use the term made whole because that's like the, the reality of it. That's the earth part. The blessed is the water. So again, before you even start, you can, you get your charcoal lit, 
you get your water and your salt blessed and combined and all that so they're ready to go for you. And then the first casting is with the blade, the second is with the frankincense and myrrh, and the third is with the salt and water. So second is with air and fire, third is with uh, water and earth. And then um, the next thing that happens is calling in the quarters. This has been 15 minutes. I think I'm going to leave this and do calling of the quarters as a separate video just so it's not too long. So, um, well, I'm going to keep going because there are other ways to cast circle that I want to tell you about. That was just the, the kind of formal casting with tools and instruments. Um, a great way to cast a circle is this. Do this with me. Sit. Get yourself calm. Imagine that there is a big cord growing down from the base of your spine, from the bottoms of your feet if you're standing, both and, either or. Let the cord go down into the ground and connect with the earth energy. It's like plugging into an electrical socket. Bzzzt, you are connected to earth energy. This is the circuit that you become part of in order to do magic so that you're not using your own physical energy, which can tap you out. And then you imagine as you breathe that energy starts to come up that cord and into your body. And as it comes into your body, it chases out anything dull, dim, or dark, any dense places, any blocked places. Just let that energy move and swirl through your body, move, move, moving, 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 charging, cleansing, clearing, chasing out anything that is not for your benefit. And then what I usually do is take three breaths. So you empty the air all the way out. You take a nice deep breath and you make the energy brighter, brighter, brighter. Make sure it fills up all your body down to your fingertips, to the top of your head, to the tips of your toes. And then you exhale and keep the energy. And then you breathe in again and make it even brighter, 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 more intense. And you exhale the air and keep the energy. And then another deep breath and really crank it to 11. See the, the light getting so bright and intense inside of you. And then you breathe it out the crown of your head. Let it go out through the crown. Arc down around you on all sides. Imagine an egg of light coming down around you, like out to where as far as your arms can reach. And let it come down and touch the earth, sink into the earth, and then let it close around that cord. So you have this complete circuit of the cord going up, the energy coming out the crown of your head and down around and back into the earth where it can be cleansed again and come back up through your cord. That's a circle. You have cast a circle right there. And what you can do, I mean, this is the, the thing that you do in the morning. Anytime you need extra protection, get this energy around you. Um, and you can visualize it as white light. You can visualize it as green and gold for the earth energy. You can also open up then and invite cosmic energy in, which is blue and silver. And I'm going to do this whole thing in just a whole guided imagery thing. So again, plans. <laughs> um, and that balances you between earth and sky. And then once you get that egg established, you can push it out. So say you're going to be in your house by yourself and you want that whole house included in your circle. Just see that glowing egg and push those boundaries out. Okay. When you do this on a daily basis and you're going out into the world, you can make the affirmation that nothing enters this. Nothing crosses this boundary. This is a living barrier that I set up that allows me to observe the world without absorbing the world. Observe, not absorb. Then anything that comes in this is only what I specifically invite in and what is for my best and highest well-being, my optimal health and well-being. So that is a circle right there. Um, you can cast a circle with just salt. Salt creates a great barrier. If you're outside, um, you can just take salt and sprinkle it around in a circle and that gives a really wonderful barrier. And even when you do, you know, like the casting with tools and it's complete, uh, still imagine that it comes to life as a sphere. You can see this flat circle that you cast and then with your breath and your affirmations, you can just see it bloom, you know, bloom into a sphere, blow up into a sphere all around you. 
Um, and imagine as vividly as you can. And I know some people have trouble visualizing, but you can do it. I guarantee you can. If you have vision, then the visual part of your brain works and you can visualize. It's a matter of practice. If you're not visually oriented, once you close your eyes, you might be working in the realm of feelings and kinetic energy and emotional energy and the, the, play, the ways that you are oriented. But just with practice, you can increase your skill of visualization. And, you know, easy things to do is just maybe look at a picture of something and then close your eyes and imagine what you just saw. See it again with your mind's eye. Think of a red triangle. Close your eyes and vividly see a red triangle. I would, I prefer either looking at an image or something a little more complicated. It's just better practice, I think. Um, imagine light. Imagine different colors of light in your mind or just different colors in your mind. Many ways where you can really engage that imaginative visual part of your brain. Um, so, yeah, that is just the, the um, creating of the physical space. Now I'm going to do another video that talks about what we do after we've created that space and what we invite in. And know that when you are casting the circle, it is clean space. You are cutting this away and removing it. And it, this is why it's good to sort of do the sage first and imagine that the space is completely clean and void of any energies at all, except you, of course, because you're in the middle of it. And if, if there are people in the circle, um, you want them to step in so that you can cast around the outside of them. Some people do it another way. The people that are there stay outside the circle. You cast, you cut a doorway, usually in the northeast, and then everybody comes in. And they're blessed and, and, and saged as they come in. So many, many, many different ways to do it. I'm really interested in how you do it or how you've been taught to do it or how your what your intuition tells you on how to do it. Because I think that's it's really great if we can share the ways we do things. Because again, no wrong way. If somebody's telling you there's only one way to do this, that's dogma and it's fucked up. <laughs> and, and I'm allergic to it. So you won't get dogma from me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that at 2222. I'm going to click out of this. Please hit the donate bullet button below if you are so moved, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Zen Witch, blessed be.